Ladies and gentlemen, please rise to welcome our guest of honor, Singapore's Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Finance, Mr. Tharman Shamugaratnam. On behalf of the Institute of Certified Public Accountants of Singapore, I'm proud and delighted to welcome all of you to the Singapore Accountancy Convention 2013. The theme of the convention, the Singapore Chartered Accountant, a beacon of the Asian economy, is timely as it is based on the next phase of growth for the accountancy profession and its significance to the development of Singapore as a leading global accountancy hub. Figures from the International Monetary Fund, the IMF, show a clear shift or rebalancing of economic gravity from west to east. The convention and its panels will share on how such global and regional trends will impact the accounting profession, both on an international scale and locally, and how Singapore can identify the opportunities, including niches of excellence, as well as serving as a node to connect and bridge the East and West, seek first mover advantage, develop the requisite capabilities, and help promote a conducive environment for such services, at least in the Asia-Pacific region, so as to establish and entrench Singapore as a leading global accountancy hub. With the transition to the CA Singapore destination, it is necessary for the Institute, as the conferer of the title, to undergo a name change for strategic alignment. The new name will be officially unveiled by DPM shortly. Uh, thank you for inviting me to join you. It's a privilege and a real delight to be with you. Um, it's an important event, third year running, that you're having this Singapore Accountancy Convention. And it's also special this year because it commemorates your 50th anniversary. It's been an impressive history, an impressive history of constant adaptation and reinvention so that the society stays relevant to a rapidly changing Singapore economy and business landscape. 50 years is a long time, more than the history of this country, and I think you've done extremely well not just to keep pace, but in many respects to exercise leadership in Singapore's business sector. There is much work ahead. It will require all stakeholders, accountancy firms, professional bodies, businesses and the government and individual accountancy professionals to work together to raise productivity and standards, seize growth opportunities in a dynamic Asia-Pacific region and invest continually talent and expertise. to present to you today on the topic of global trends and directions affecting the accounting profession and what it means and holds for Asia. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a great profession that we are part of. And we are facing unprecedented challenges and therefore opportunities. And as I move around the globe, I continue to be surprised at the interest and the excitement and the level of commitment both of the profession and other business professionals in this topic. 
Ladies and gentlemen, the train has left the station on integrated reporting. And if you're currently not on that train, don't fret. It's going to make one or two more brief stops on its journey and you will have an opportunity to join the train. If you really look at the, the big economic activities that's happening, the players in Southeast Asia and Asia do have the economic might to now take on the West. You should also see a convergence, and, and particularly around uh, business practices, international standards. Uh, you know, we have a global uh, capital market, and uh, you know, I, I think the two of them need to go hand in hand. There is convergence, and I think there is interdependence. I think the world has become increasingly interdependent, uh, because if you look at uh, the supply chains of MNCs, uh, they uh, definitely uh, cover more than uh, uh, one country, more than one continent. In my mind, it makes for better balance between the Western economies and the Eastern economies. It's not that one will dominate the other, because we mustn't forget that what's and all, at the end of the day, the American economy is still the world's largest and most dynamic in terms of innovation, in terms of technological developments. I think accounting is a noble profession. I'm proud to be a chartered accountant. It's a major ingredient in the process of wealth creation. Companies rely heavily on accounting data to ensure they're making the right decisions, the right products. Investors rely on us to provide the funds to drive industry forward. They rely on the auditors to make sure the numbers are right. We oil the wheels of commerce. firms are always going to be seen as serving their own selfish interest. They're always going to be in there as trying to maximise profits. And the profession requires an independent body on one side who do not have that profit motive and are not seen to have that profit motive in order to drive forward innovation and to drive forward uh, the, the public good. So thought leadership needs to come from a professional body rather than individual firms if it's going to be really easily accepted uh, in society. It has been really a challenging but at the same time exciting and meaningful journey for SAC so far. There are really many, many challenges ahead of us and I think we've only just begun opening the road. There's so much pavement to do and so much things to move look forward to. And I think complexity is the issue and that's why I made the point and I have made it quite regularly over the last few months. I do think we need to listen to the people who are implementing the standards and preparing the accounts and ask them to tell us how we stay relevant because what was right 20 years ago is not necessarily right in, in today's market. The, the key driver, the key information feedback that we got at the end of the day was really all that information we begin to ask ourselves as a, as, as a board, uh, how relevant is, are some of these information out to the shareholders? Part of the reason why accountants are so afraid of, of articulating their judgment is the, the, the worry about them being sued. And, and because of that, they stick very closely to the rules because that helps to protect. Some of your colleagues in the region and standards said is persuade them and it will become known you're the driver. And the more you do that, the more people will think this is some profession here. Uh, and that, I think, will do you a great deal. ICAW has always been a leader, has been known for that, has been coming up with ideas, the Scottish Institute too. Join them. And then when you talk about uh, innovation and change and the use of technology, one would then ask the question, why is it that the audit report needs to be issued only once annually, or perhaps two times a year, or perhaps every quarter? With the use of technology, the challenge now is, why can't you issue 
audit report much more frequently. You see financial markets being dislocated, you see liquidity tightness, and you kind of know that there will be tsunami of changes in, I guess, the regulations, which now come to be known as Basel III. Uh, you see changes in accounting standards that are continuing to evolve. And I guess the question is, how would the finance function actually be reshaped uh, to respond to these challenges. With the uncertainty, the volatility, even the support in the aftermath of the global financial crisis, the need for the finance guys to help the organization to navigate in this difficult support, economic uh, support uh, waters, has really <clears throat> accentuated the need actually for, for finance folks to acquire new skills. If you look at the world post-financial crisis, there has been greater regulation. From a corporate governance perspective, there have been demands for transparency, there have been demands for accountability. I guess my advice is I think our talent pool need to understand all those things. There are a lot of intricacies. There are you know, different culture as you move around the region. You know, we always talk about Southeast Asia as one. Southeast Asia is really not one. I mean, ASEAN 2015 is going to come. It's going to be one trading block, but it is actually a very diverse culture and we need to be able to operate in that. I strongly believe that if we, Singapore, can be uh, at the value, uh, because there's a bigger picture that, again, I personally am following up is the integration of the ASEAN market coming in a few years' time. Uh, with technology, with um, you know, the, um, uh, globalization, um, you know, Singapore can be easily bypassed. So I think the, the issue is that how do we make ourselves to be relevant? The government knows fully that that's our mandate, to constantly reinvent ourselves to stay ahead of the game. Sure, at the end of the day, the West can go to any other country directly. But what does Singapore bring to the table. I agree entirely that we have a strong profession and our fundamentals are there. Where I think the gap is, is the value perception or the value recognition of the services that accountants and auditors provide. Singapore is a well-trusted brand. So I think in that sense, uh, when we serve as a bridge for the West to go into the East, especially to China or to India or to ASEAN, I think we have a role to play. There are gems of opportunities to be seized in the next phase of growth for the accountancy profession and its significance. I hope that you will walk away from this year's Singapore Accountancy Convention brimming with insights and ideas for the future. Yeah.